Botanic Garden at Oklahoma State University houses a world-renowned turfgrass research center. Joining us to talk about the program is Steve Batten. Well, Steve, I know there's a very diverse group of scientists involved with the turfgrass research. There sure are. We have three out here primarily that deal with turf within horticulture group. We also are supported by turf uh, pathology, uh, by the uh, uh, entomology department, uh, mm -hmm. and also we are work, working in cooperation with the uh, uh, plant uh, and soil science department here at OSU. And they've been a big part of developing new turf grass varieties, particularly Bermuda grass. That's mm -hmm. correct, because Bermuda grass in Oklahoma is the uh, number one grass uh, primarily in, in home lawns and uh, on athletic fields and throughout Oklahoma where, where we need turf grass. So, Yes, we are supported uh, by the plant uh, and soil science department and uh, they help us in, with their collection of Bermuda grasses mm -hmm. in a screening process Then we're looking at new varieties for Oklahoma. And as you look at those varieties, um, for Bermuda grass we're at the north end of the range, so one of the things you're looking at is cold tolerance? That's right. Oklahoma, is a, it, it, although it's a southern state, it's a northern it's on the northern end of the southern state, so we're looking at cold tolerance. We're certainly interested in drought tolerance, particularly on a year like this year where we've had some drought in the past. And to support that drought tolerance study, you have these rainout shelters that are being developed uh, where we can allow the rain in, but then also protect some of the grass from irrigation. That's, that's correct, and, and of course we're screening new Bermuda grass and we're releasing some new ones, but we also are interested in, uh, in both physiology from the shade standpoint and from the uh, drought standpoint. And Dr. Uh, Justin Moss has a new rainout shelter that's being constructed as, as we speak for that purpose. And you mentioned shade. We also have some structures to protect, uh, to provide some shade and look for shade tolerance in our Bermuda grass, which is a little bit different feature. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Part of that screening process for screening all these Bermuda grasses is how shade tolerant they are. Bermuda grass is known in the past not to be shade tolerant. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're been, we've been using uh, tall fescue primarily as, a, as our shade grass throughout Oklahoma. And uh, Bermuda grass uh, uses far less water mm -hmm. and has far less disease issues. Also grows in the summertime, which is when we're out using mm -hmm. our grass. Use it. Another grass that is being developed um, for low water use is the buffalo grass. Why don't we go take a look at that one? Absolutely. Now Steve, there's growing interest in using buffalo grass as a turf. Tell me a little bit about this grass. Well this is an old grass that has new interest certainly. Mm -hmm. It's a grass that's native to our prairies of the United States. In fact it's our only native grass uh, that we have as a native uh, turf type grass. Mm -hmm. Um, and it has quite a range from the south up through North Dakota, correct? Has tremendous cold tolerance and uh, it certainly does well in, in, in a drought, droughty environment such as uh, Oklahoma, what we've seen this past spring would certainly be uh, mm -hmm. an example. And that's primarily our interest is I see it being touted as that low input grass does it take a lot of fertilizer and once it's established very low water it's mm -hmm. a low fertilizer low water use mm -hmm. type of turf and it's and for that reason people are looking at it with great interest mm -hmm. now earlier you mentioned the plant pathology and entomology group that's out here studying tell me a little bit about their research mm -hmm. They're looking at primarily screening for cultivar resistance is one of their large interest out here. In fact, we have several studies in which we uh, are uh, screening uh, cultivars such as bent grass on golf course greens, and we're looking at um, a study where we have disease on those and which cultivars of the new ones are more disease resistant. They're all, of course, they also screen new products, and that's always important because our new products are safer, and that's an, always an ongoing issue. But the, uh, the integrated part of, the, of that into our uh, use of turf and management at, mm -hmm. at all levels, both commercial and home level, is certainly important. And while those studies looking at that natural resistance will reduce chemical inputs, we're also looking at ways of managing nutrient runoff from the turf as well uh, in some of those uh, other studies. That's correct and then we of course we went, just went through a period of large construction and uh, 
what we have for nutrient runoff is now becoming an issue and we're looking at nutrient runoff uh, certainly of phosphorus and, and others and our, how the turf affects that in both height and uh, density and so forth and we're those are ongoing as we speak. Well, there's a lot of wonderful research coming out from the center, uh, but of course you're connecting that to the homeowner as well and the industry, the, the turf industry. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Dennis Martin, who's the turf grass extension specialist, mm -hmm. who's in charge of the uh, uh, extension program here at OSU for turf grass. And through him, uh, there's an education program that goes all the way to the consumers by way of our county extension agents. So we help support their education. Okay, and we also have field days out here and uh, a number of workshops and conferences to train professionals. We certainly have a lot of different things through the year. Okay, and of course our own students here in the turf program. Well, this is a wonderfully diverse turf program. Uh, thank you so much for sharing a little bit more insight. Thank you. Mm -hmm.